Yeah, we're, we're going to kick off the track um, by learning about empowering customer experience through, through conversations from uh, Daniel and, and Yu Ming at Vonage. We're going to follow that up with uh, Luis Araneta uh, from uh, Brancus, uh, who's going to talk about how you build payments products um, or how they built payments products across Southeast Asia. We're going to hear also from uh, Iwan at, uh, at Telcom Cell about um, Telco APIs. And in the telecommunications space, we're going to continue with uh, Batyan from uh, GSMA talking about um, GSMA's open APIs. So with that, I'm going to ask uh, Daniel and Yu Meng to, uh, to share your audio and, uh, and video. Hi, Yu Meng and Hello. Daniel. Good. So Hi, George. I'm going to just ask you to uh, share your screen and then I'll leave you to it. Yeah. Right. Let me share my screen. Is that feasible now? It's, yeah. I can see it. All right. Okay. Perfect. Then. Good, okay. afternoon. Good afternoon to everyone in Southeast Asia. Selamat siang untuk komunitas API yang ada di Indonesia. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you today, uh, to share our experience in empowering our customers and enhancing their customer experience uh, through conversations. Um, I'll spend about 20 minutes in, or well, slightly less than that, and I'll hand this presentation over to Yumeng, who is physically next to me now, so not virtually next to me. And um, uh, you may will share a bit of demo and how uh, this conversation, I'll, I'll define a bit later what we meant by conversation. And uh, you may will show it in live how this conversation is uh, implemented. So I guess nothing captures the event in 2020 better than this quote from Lenin's, right? Uh, the context is very different. It was made during the revolution time in Russia. But then uh, it's precisely what we experienced last year. There are decades where nothing happens and there are weeks where decades happen, right? Uh, let me put it in more context here. Um, we have executive from UK, from e-commerce sectors sharing with us that, hey, they have this projection of growth for the next 10 years, but this projection of growth is materialized in the first six months of the year in 2020. And we all see as well in the alliance industry where uh, 10 years of growth, one decade of growth suddenly disappears in the first three months of the um, pandemic last year. Right? So where does it lead us? At Phonics, we have been fortunate enough to work with leading industries. And uh, there are some industries who are successfully emerged from this pandemic by implementing many things, right, uh, in digital transformations. So uh, in the next slides, I'll share two different industries. One is the healthcare and the other one is edutech. And we will see how they um, transformed themselves, accelerated their transformation during this pandemic. So let's start with the healthcare industry. Um, early healthcare services started with person feeling sick and going to the doctor. Oh, no, no, not really actually. Before, even before that, the person feeling sick and the doctor will come to that person, right? And the doctor will dispense the medications and um, if, the, if the problem is not too severe, then uh, after a few days, then the person will feel better. The problem is then um, if the, the issue is quite severe, then during that part of time, uh, it's very difficult to find the experts who can help them let alone diagnose properly their issues, right? May not be in the same countries, may not be in the same cities. Uh, it may be, it has to be done in different countries. Over the time, healthcare become more spe specialized and um, the, the model is slightly different now, rather than doctors comes to that person, then the, the sick person will go to the doctors and the doctor will again do the diagnosis uh, dispense medications and uh, in some cases, uh, in more severe cases, then you will refer that person to a more centralized healthcare services, to a larger hospital whereby more experts are, are, are located in the same place. 
So in that particular location, in that big hospital, then lots of um, diagnosis, analysis will be performed on a person. And hopefully, after some time, then the person will, will get better. And we, we can see um, this is something to a certain extent, or to many extents, actually, what's been happening before the pandemic, right before the pandemic. And at that point of time, uh, we can see as well, to a certain extent, how technology has been used how communication APIs have been used in terms of notifications, in terms of reminders, in terms of, to a certain extent, uh, doing video communications. Right? Last year is really a game changer uh, in terms of transformation in the healthcare industry. You will see a mass adoption of video API last year, right? From phonates, we have seen seven folds of adop adoptions of the video API in the healthcare industry. So in that, in that one year, we can see how, whereby previously the patient will go to the doctor, now this kind of discussions or consultation is being done remotely. And uh, the dispensing of the medication is being done remotely as well. And uh, in some part of the world, the delivery of the medication is done through dr drones, for example, right? So we, we can see so many things changing last year in the healthcare industry. But of course, but of course, still, if the problem is very severe, that person has to go to the hospital and perform so many things, that are their diagnosis, uh, talking to the experts, uh, further analysis and so forth, right? Now, what we are seeing as changing is that there is a convergence here in terms of the devices into the seamless healthcare experience. What we meant is that whereby this diagnosis has to be uh, performed in a centralized location. Certain healthcare providers are bringing this to the edge, whereby um, they are equipping the, uh, the healthcare providers or even the patients uh, in the remote locations with that ability to, to be diagnosed remotely with the sensors and, um, and other communications or, or providers, right? So uh, we asked our customers, um, what does it take actually to, to offer this, right? Uh, well, the, the feedback is that first of all, we need to ensure when it comes to this stage, then we have um, good uh, infrastructure to provide the security, um, the privacy, and uh, to a certain extent, uh, personalization. Uh, there should be a kind of infrastructure that provides multimodal communication. So it's not only simply kind of video communications or video consultations, but multimodal communications in, in which then the uh, the patient would be able to uh, be diagnosed remotely, not only through the video, but the, through the audio tree, uh, to the sensory uh, equipments as well. Now, from phonics, we provide the web sockets, we provide speech-to-text, text-to-speech uh, APIs that will allow these um, requirements to be fulfilled. So that, that's healthcare industry, and that's the change that we are experiencing, or that we have been experiencing in the healthcare industry. The same thing we are seeing as well in the education industry. Oh, well, I shouldn't call it industry, but education sector. Right? It's not yet to that industry level. Um, as we know it before the pandemic, education is very much a singular stack uh, in a sense that uh, you go to school, you follow the curriculum from the school, uh, you go to kindergarten and uh, graduate from the universities. Uh, so one follow, one will follow single path there. Um, if you are, if you are assigned, if you are getting a good uh, education provider, good teacher, then you are lucky. Then uh, you are in good hands. But if you are um, if you are getting slightly less experienced teacher, for example, then uh, that, there's a bit of efforts need to be done to to catch up. Right. So that that's education as we know it, and we, we can see also this this is happening before pandemic, and we can see also the technology is there. Uh, we can see during the classroom sessions, the teacher will play some videos uh, showing some movies from other part of the world doing conferencing with uh, some other students. So that, that's been happening before the pandemic. But after the pandemic or during the pandemic, we, we see many things changing in the education sector. You can see there are more different domains. So it's not monolithic anymore, but uh, the learning experience is multi-path, multi-domains, right? And uh, if 
previously learning is um, very much on from K kindergarten to the university. We can see adult learning as well here. And actually, um, there is a research that uh, the spend on adult learning it, during last year is uh, eclipsing the spend for learning between kindergarten to the university. And partly because of the pandemics, the government is subsidizing this, these efforts as well because adults need to be reskilled, for example. So you can see how the, the learning is moving away from the traditional learning as we know of. Now, from the technology point of view, uh, whereby um, the video, for example, was more like the periphery, uh, uh, add on to the learning process. We can see the video is having this major role in the learning. But is it only video? Uh, well, not really, actually. If you talk to the more successful learning providers that so happen to become our customer, um, they are able to combine these multiple learning formats video, audio, text into a single education experience. And, and the same thing, right? We ask, hey, um, what does it take for you to be, become successful? And well, what is the main criteria uh, and requirements? The same answer as well. We, we need to be able to provide the services securely. We need to uh, be able to give that privacy that is required. We need to be able to personalize the services so that's something that uh, I think you, Phonics, can, can offer us from your API uh, communication APIs. Uh, the same thing as well, it's not only one-way video communications, but audio and video. And then the feedback as well to the, um, to the AIs, for example. Um, I'll give you an example whereby um, if somebody is learning how to compose a music, then uh, on, in real time, then uh, the video and audio will capture the compositions and the activities from that particular student and uh, feed it back to the uh, artificial intelligence and then uh, the AI will kind of compare uh, with the, um, the standard or the, the right uh, compositions and then give suggestions how to improve that composition. So we can see here, um, Expertise is not anymore exclusive to certain part of the world or certain class in one country. But with this um, shift, uh, we can see how the education is more um, uh, liberated or uh, provided free to others. Right. So uh, let me move to the next one. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've been talking about this communication API, talking about um, communication channels and anything. So what, what was it actually? So it's all started um, with cloud computing in that uh, in year 2000, uh, you, you may have been there and you may be aware well, um, that during that year 2000, there's this term called cloud computing. With cloud computing um, and along with cloud computing, um, the communication services is moving to the cloud as well. And, and as having these communication services moving to the cloud, there's a new business model called communication and platform as a service. So, um, and by year 2015, we see that there are key industries adopting communication platform as a service in, in improving their customer engagement. So those examples that I cited to you earlier, these are the key industries that have been uh, adopting our uh, CPAS in their interaction to their customers. If we look at our customers today, uh, we can see some brands that you may be familiar with and you may have heard. You can see how Amazon is using our in apps chatting function to interact with their customers. We can see how Airbnb is using our SMS API to verify and to authenticate the end user, similarly like Uber. And you can guess in the healthcare industry, how um, the um, healthcare industry is using our video API to interact with the, uh, the end user. I mentioned about voice, text to speech and speech to text. This is um, the, under, the underlying technology is the voice of, of API, voice over API that we are providing to Netflix to pro for them to interact with their customers. So you can see how um, various communication APIs are being used uh, by uh, industries. Uh, more specifically, from the companies, uh, from the company's point of view, we have this um, 
various API in place. We have voice API that provides you communication uh, in, in terms of voice over IP. We have video API. We have messaging API in a form of SMS, MMS, and social media emails as well. It's part of the APIs that we can offer to those enterprises. But it's nice to have all these APIs, right? And uh, how does it help them? Not everybody in, uh, that, that, that's able to use this API will be successful, actually. What I want to highlight here is that those companies that are able to use that API to form the conversation and in, uh, with their customers, those are the ones that are successful and emerging from this, this pandemic successfully. Uh, let me give you a, an example of what I said just now through a customer journey. Um, we can see here, it is, this is a customer journey from a uh, customer dealing with, uh, with the um, financial industry, right? And, um, doing loan applications. Uh, typically, the interaction starts with uh, that person to register themselves to get the account and then, um, then doing the verifications. But you can see here already how uh, that particular uh, company is a, or is and should be able to interact uh, with this uh, applicant to through many ways through voice through the uh, video through artificial intelligence to um, understand the profile better for example so uh, and then uh, moving forward in the journey going to the loan applications there's a messaging API. And by the way, you may will be showing this in the demo later on as well. And you can see how uh, the uh, businesses doing um, the messaging or using the messaging in terms of chatbot to interact during the customer journey as well. Well, uh, I hope you, you get the picture. Then uh, let me, before I hand it over to you, Ming, let me kind of summarize what I said just now in terms of what kind of industry been successful, what they uh, what did they do and so forth, right? So first of all, those we have seen um, becoming successful emerging from this pandemic, those are the customers who are able to create the conversations everywhere in its customer interactions in the journey, right? And uh, with that, because it is an interactions, they are able to uh, capture and understand the customer better. And with that, they can um, adapt that experience um, for that particular customer to, uh, to personalize it to the customer. And then along the way, they enrich this conversation with data and, and artificial intelligence. So for example, if this is the one cold calling that company needs to do for the company, uh, for the, for the uh, cold calling uh, outbound calls, for example, right? They will need to make sure that uh, the cold calling is meaningful and successful. And one way to do that is to prepare the agent with uh, insights, who they are calling for, what kind of profile that person is calling, for, calling to, right? So these kind of things can be provided through these conversations, through the communication API. Last but not least, um, when you are implementing this communication API, uh, you can see from the common themes before security, privacy, scalability. Those are the, are the main requirements that would be required and need to be offered from these enterprises. So, um, you may I'll hand it over to you for a quick demo, yeah. and then I'll stop my uh, my screen here, and uh, we can take it in QA later. Thank you, Daniel. Okay, so I'm just going to show a quick demo today on how a Vonage a portfolio of communication APIs can uh, easily enhance uh, the customer journey for a financial use case. Okay. This is an example of a financial customer experience journey in a loan application from a bank. We will see how Vonage verify API messages API over WhatsApp, and video API can greatly improve the loan application process and provide a seamless experience for the customer. Right now, the customer is filling up the form with his name, ID number, and phone number. Once completed, we will verify their identity over 2FA by using Vonage Verify API. This will help protect the customer from fraud and ensure that the loan application is a legitimate request. 
Once the customer has entered his OTP code, the bank will be able to communicate with the customer over WhatsApp through Vonage Message API. Here, the bank's website has provided three shortcuts that will bring the customer to their WhatsApp account very easily. By communicating over WhatsApp, the bank will be able to make use of rich media such as sending PDF and images. This is an advantage over the traditional SMS. On the bank's WhatsApp account, we have a simple chatbot that can gather basic information from the customer before handing over to a live agent. By using a chatbot, we are able to answer simple queries from a customer in a self-help manner without increasing the workload of the contact center agents. Through the chatbot's integration with the bank's internal system, it knows that the customer already has a business account with the bank. To confirm this, the chatbot has provided two very simple yes or no call to action buttons for the customer. Once the information is confirmed, the conversation is now handed over to a financial advisor to guide the customer through the rest of the application process. Here, the financial advisor sends a PDF file containing the bank's terms and conditions to the customer for him to review. The financial advisor also asks for a photo of the customer's annual result that will be attached to his loan application. At this point, the financial advisor would like to invite the customer to a live video call in order to explain the various options that are available. He can do this by sending the invite to the video call over WhatsApp directly. With Vonage Video API, the customer can now join the call easily by, just by clicking on the link. They can just use a mobile browser for the video call and do not need to install any mobile applications. Once in the video call, the financial advisor can then share his screen with the customer in order to go through the important aspects of the loan. This video call can also be recorded for training and compliance purposes if required. Once the customer has agreed to the loan application, the financial advisor will now pull in his bank manager into the same video call. This is so that the manager can verify that the customer fully understands the terms and conditions of the loan. And with that, the customer has just secured a loan from the bank for his business in a very easy and seamless manner. Yep. So uh, all right. Okay. Sorry for that. Uh, thanks, Yuen. Uh, John, I uh, hand it back to you. Uh, that's the end of our pre uh, presentation and demo. I hope you have some ideas on how uh, the communication API has been embedded in various uh, industry, in various verticals to uh, uh, allow them to uh, interact with the customer better and emerging from this pandemic more successfully. Thanks very much, uh, Daniel and Yu Meng. Just stay on uh, for a moment because I, I have a couple of questions. So we, um, you, you talked about um, connecting the customer journey across, uh, and you gave several use cases, uh, healthcare, education, and, and financial services. What it appears to me that um, you, there are, you've provided the building blocks. Um, some of these building blocks are providing a specific service, uh, you know, a chat um, uh, through, through an API. But what's also needed is uh, to be able to connect these different services so each one of them may be exposed through an API, but then the, um, the, the use case needs to connect all, all the way through. And I guess we've all been in situations where we've uh, telephoned a company and had to type, we've been faced with the interactive voice response system, the, the IVR initially, and we've had to type in some buttons and maybe in our, our, our uh, customer number or something, and then we, we end up getting through to a, a an operator in the contact center who then asks us more questions, often the same questions. And then we realize that uh, they don't uh, have the ability to help us because there's another team that they need to hand off to. And there's this blind pass to another part of the organization 
who ask the same questions again to identify yourself, to say what your problem is and, and all of these things. So what are the, um, so what are the things that um, help to avoid this blind pass problem when you're connecting these, uh, these different services? So uh, let's start from the um, interactions with the IVR that you mentioned uh, at the mm -hmm. beginning uh, from the customer journey point of view. Uh, and to be fair to the um, earlier days um, that's experienced by the telco company, it's not very easy to build a system that can understand the inputs from the customer mm -hmm. um, seamlessly because um, if, if you want to, um, it, to be able to um, converse the speech to text, then you, you'll need to be able to understand the language and the context of the language and the dialects in the language as well, mm -hmm. uh, which was not there at that point of time. But uh, more and more, we can see it's here already uh, in, uh, during this time. Now, so that, that's the first stage, right, whereby um, we should be able, there should be a um, API, there should be a channel whereby the inputs from the customer can be understood uh, mm -hmm. correctly and properly, yeah. so to say. and. Putting that, set, uh, that aside, then second phase is that to be able to understand uh, who the agent will be talking to, uh, who, who are you actually? Uh, so and then um, so that part is not easy as well because uh, somebody can use the um, the profile from somebody else by only using the the mobile number or the phone number. So it's mm. not so easy, uh, but then uh, it's doable in a sense because, uh, for example, if you uh, put detections uh, if you're able to detect the persons from the uh when you speak uh you, you have a special pattern uh, on your voice from the voice recognition then you'll know that this is the person that you're talking to and then you can pull out the information so uh these are few things that i guess uh, what we see from our customers that they are trying to do it's not i have to say it's not massively uh implemented yet but some of the um of the leading companies are already experimenting, exper experimenting with this already, and uh, to to certain good success that we, we, we've seen as well. I hope that answered the question. Uh, so, is it a matter of passing the identity from each touch point to the next one? Passing the identity uh, yeah. and to mm -hmm. uh, to understand from this identity what kind of interaction has been done in the past. Yeah. From there, mm -hmm. that you know uh, the profile of the customer. Mm -hmm. um, if the past uh, was bad experience bad interactions yeah. then i mm. uh, this is not something that uh, well then we, we, we must know the context of that bad experience and we can provide a good mm. customer service after that yeah okay well thanks very much uh, uh daniel and and you Meng. uh